Hey gang, Kaika here at the Crawl Space Custom Shop uh, doing a quick tutorial on shocks. This is one of the biggest questions that I get from most of the customers here is how to fill shocks. So instead of saying it a bazillion times, I figure I'm going to make this video and hopefully help everyone out. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to go over the types of shocks. Now, for the most part, this is going to be covering all the coilover style shocks, but I like to break up those uh, coilover shocks into two groups, basically diaphragm shocks and undiaphragm shocks. And they assemble different ways, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. Um, at least how to get them to fill correctly. Now, um, we've got the standard axial shocks here that you find on the SCX-10s, uh, the Wraith, the Bombers, the Exos, uh, the SMT-10s, anything axial, they're going to have at least one type of these shocks available. Um, the smaller SCX-10 uh, 90mm shocks, those are a non-diaphragmed shock where the larger or bigger bore style shocks, those are going to be diaphragm shocks. Now they involve this in the uh, instruction manual, which unfortunately does not work properly. So we throw that out. Now um, we're gonna break these down at least to most of the brands that are covered that we use on crawlers and scalers and stuff and then the types that they are. So at the Axial brand, we've got the Traxxas shocks, we've got the big bore shocks here. This is a diaphragm shock. I think they call this the GSR shock. Uh, this is also diaphragmed as well, uh, aluminum bodied. And this will also go, um, this information will also work for the, the plastic Traxxas shocks because they still run a diaphragm. Uh, we've got these Proline racing style shocks, uh, both these, uh, these ones here are not are, are diaphragmed. Uh, the scale, the Proline scale shocks are non-diaphragmed. Uh, these are the uh, low C shocks here that you'll find maybe on a night crawler. This is non-diaphragm. This is a cartridge shock, if you will. And we'll go over that in a minute. And at least for the King Off-Road short course shocks, which we like to put on the Wraiths and the Bombers, this is a King's version of a diaphragm shock. Okay, so these are non-diaphragm over here, and we've got all the diaphragmed ones over here. Cool. So we're going to start off with the non-diaphragmed ones, get these guys out of the way, and then you can check these out. Now, um, the way that we've made these shocks work, at least in the comp crawling world, the, uh, the axial short shocks, is um, first we started to put set screws into the shock caps. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little set screw in there and that almost acts like a relief valve. So we take a two and a half millimeter metric drill bit and drill into the, the shock cap here and then we use a standardized set screw. So when we fill this shock, I'll do this one quick. Fill it up, and the first time you fill these up, you're going to go about a quarter of the way, uh, at least for this video you'll see the difference. Go a quarter of the way, express the piston all the way to the top, it might bubble out a little bit, and draw it back down. That will get any air that's sitting under the piston into the body of the shock and hopefully express it outwards, and it'll just basically bubble up. I'll use the, uh, I'll use the driver here to kind of stir it around and get those bubbles broken up and when, when you go through your set of shocks you'll start at one and then go all the way through four and fill them up and when you come back to one all those bubbles should be at the top. Now like I've, ex uh, like I've explained in the King Shock video you fill these all the way up to the top and then you slowly pump this the piston all the way to the top of the shock and we've got the shock oil filled all the way to the top. It's kind of bubbled up right there. And then the way we do this with the shock uh, cap, I'll just put this set screw in here very, just a couple turns after we've drilled a hole in it. Fill this with oil here. And this is when it starts getting messy, just like always with shocks. And take that guy, flip it, 
screw it together and you can already see it's driving the piston away so at least we not we got a good seal now I'm gonna take this set screw back out here oops and then get that out of the way so I don't goober it up with shock oil and I'm gonna push the piston all the way up now the body of the shock is completely full of oil with no air which is what we're going for I'm gonna screw this down finger tight you don't need to crank it down remember it's not a lug nut just need to get it finger tight and obviously it's goobering everywhere but that's why we have chemicals to clean up we'll take this set screw here get it in the hole and drive, drive that bad boy home now you can see the angle at which this set screw is going into the shock cap and that's the angle that you want to drill it in you can see to me that's when I know a shock is filled properly it draws it back up okay you can also listen to it and if there's any air in there it's gonna be crunchy or squeaky so if you when you're building your shocks especially these guys and as you assemble them like I said you if you get any crunching or squeaking noise you've done it wrong go back and do it again if you've had any issues with them this is hopefully the fix that's gonna make them work well uh, as always we promote using the uh, team associated green slime on all the seals when you're building your shocks that was uh, outlined at least in the uh, King off uh, King off-road shock video yeah. the low C shock and at least for the older nightcrawler style it's got basically the body itself shock body itself is open on both ends okay now again um, the instruction manuals for this shock tell you to fill it from the top but in actuality it's easier to fill it from the bottom and that's how we're gonna do this guy here so I got this back together like so I'm gonna fill this up so if you've ever worked with the low C shocks you're gonna build these shock cartridges here install them onto the shock shaft get the piston on there and then we're ready to rock and roll uh, again the biggest thing about uh, building shocks is patience take your time do it right you're gonna just do it once and you're only getting messed up uh, get mess messy once so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it into the shock body very slowly I'm not gonna slam it down because it's just gonna squirt all over the place sometimes when I do this I'll just let it sit here and I'll go through the other four shocks or excuse me other three shocks and by the time I come back to the first one it's kinda just made its way down into the shock body but if you do have some time constraints you can just push it in there you can see it flowing out okay now if you look on the shock cartridge there's a little slot right here that is going to allow the oil to express out and I'm going to hold this guy here you can kind of see it might be hard to see because it's clear but it is slowly expressing out as we screw the shock cartridge into the shock body get it finger tight and let's listen to it yep sounds good that shock is filled working right so we have your axial shocks okay now again they tell you how to fill it here and just forget that that's not gonna work okay I'm gonna pop this guy open once you've assembled the shock. You assemble the shock properly like the uh, instructions say so, but filling is gonna be completely different. Now, this is where the hack comes in. When you get into these shocks from Axial, they do come with their own diaphragms, okay? These diaphragms here, they're pretty decent. They're silicone, they're clear, but for me, they're a little too thick around this edge here to properly work. If you've ever assembled these axial shocks, if you screw it down too tight, this um, diaphragm kind of slips into the shock and you might think you have it done correctly, but in essence, you end up with this once you screw it down too tight. So what's the hack? Well, what that is, is we get the Traxxas shock diaphragms, okay? Traxxas part 1765, silicone diaphragms, that's what we need. So we're going to crack this guy open, okay? Now, this is where diaphragm shock building comes into play once we've gone over all the details. We'll go and fill this up. 
here all the way to the top I'm making a mess I'm just gonna slowly work it down and obviously it's gonna flow out now we set that diaphragm right on that crown of oil right there we're gonna hold this with a q-tip push pushing down slightly and then drawing up drawing the shock body up like so I'm gonna clean this off here I'm gonna take that shock cap that I just threw on the ground <laughs> take that shock cap drop it right on there screw it down again finger tight and bingo we have got a perfectly filled big bore axial shock listen to it now, there's a little squeak at the top we'll just tighten that down a little bit Ah, she's feeling good. There we go. So that's the plastic body shock. The same thing is going to be true for the metal body shock. They're the same, um, the same dimensions and everything. We'll pop that guy out or just get rid of them completely. Again, they're just too thick for their own good. So we get rid of those guys. Toss it in there. Like I said, we fill it all the way to the top. Express the piston to the top, place the diaphragm on the crown of oil, push it down with a q-tip, draw the shock body back up, screw it back down, get those threads to work. So same thing will hold true with the uh, Traxxas shocks here. These will already have those Traxxas diaphragms in there obviously, we'll pop those out those guys right there again fill it express the piston upwards drop the shock uh, the diaphragm onto the crown of the oil push it in with the the q-tip screw it down and you're good good to go I think we got all that down now one of the biggest ones here is well we'll go to the proline ones real quick uh, a lot of people are still running the proline shocks these are the older style proline shocks uh, I don't have any of the new ones. Well, one, because they're way too expensive. Uh, but if I ever get a set in, I'll definitely do a quick tutorial on that. This guy here, see, like I was saying, Proline got smart already when they first got into their shock game. They've got a hole right here in the shock cap that's going to allow it to express outwards. Now, I still like to use the same technique of popping the diaphragm out of the shock cap clean that up so there's no liquid in there and let's double check these uh, Traxxas uh, diaphragms to see if they'll work on this proline you know for a couple bucks to get the security of a properly built shock and look at that they sit perfectly again we'll fill it draw the piston up top the crown and then screw it down okay all right, last but not least, we're going to talk about these King uh, RC four-wheel drive King off-road shocks. These are the short course shocks, 110 millimeter. We like to get these on the uh, the race, the bombers, the SMTs, uh, things like that. This one is going to be have its own diaphragm. Now, if you don't want to drill into the top of this guy to relieve that vacuum, that's fine. That's totally understandable. We'll get this guy out here. Again, we've got a large, thicker diaphragm I'm not too fond of. And again, that's where these Traxxas silicone diaphragms will come into place. Again, as always, fill it quarter of the way. Do your four, come back, fill it all the way. Drive the piston all the way to the top. Cap the crown of oil. Hold it down with your Q-tip. Draw the piston back down in the body and then crank this guy on so yeah that's what I got folks hopefully this uh, tutorial has been helpful uh, I've been trying to pound out more videos if you have any questions comments or concerns please leave it in the comments I will address it as quickly as possible and as always at the crawl space keep learning keep building and keep pushing Aloha